Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. If you check out the description box below, I will have uh, some links and some information to the two companies that support play fast football. Uh, Game Track, sideline replay system we use. It's the fastest, most advanced sideline replay system on the market. We've used it this entire year, and our assistant coaches that get a chance to uh, to look at it on the sideline, our defensive guys, my all line guy, they're really uh, they're really enjoying the stuff that. Uh, the system that uh, that game strat is putting out there, and it's really uh, been working well for us. And then just play football on uh, digital so um, software solutions, kind of playbook stuff, and some game plan stuff, and some things that you can use with your team uh, to enhance the learning process with your team and to enhance the game plan process with your team. I haven't um, fully dove into it yet. Um, in the off season, I plan on learning how to use everything with it. Uh, I've only screwed around with some of the playbook stuff and didn't really have a chance this year, but in the offseason I'm going to fully dive into it. It looks like some really great stuff. I've used it for some diagrams and some drawings, but I haven't used it fully yet, and that's my offseason. One of my first plans is to go ahead and dive full into uh, Just Play Sports Solutions because they got some really good stuff, and I'm really excited to use it, so check that out in the description box. All right, today I'm going to talk about how to, how to uh, defend Sky pooch onside kicks. All right, in high school football, a lot of the times you're going to see a lot of teams that don't have a kicker that can kick the ball consistently inside the 10 5 or even get touchbacks. The teams that you're playing that have a kicker that can put the ball in the end zone and get touchbacks, most of the time when you're, you know, when you're setting up against teams like that, you want to, you want to set up returns. And, but most of the time, if the ball is going to be touched back, you're never going to chance to get a chance to get returns. A lot of the times in high school, I would say probably. You know, in 10 games, I would say six or seven of those 10 games, you're going to see teams that are going to have to use multiple versions of kickoffs because they don't have a kicker that can kick the ball consistently inside the 10. So they feel like if they kick it deep and they kick it to the 10 or the 15 and you get a 15, 20-yard return, you're going to have the ball at the 35-yard line. So they choose usually to sky kick, short pooch kick, or some of those teams even choose to use multiple onside. So a lot of times in high school, when you're doing kick return stuff, you're actually setting up returns while at the same time trying to defend the multiple onside looks or the multiple sky or pooch kick looks that yet you're going to see. All right, so what we choose to do when we see teams like that, when we know that they don't have a kicker that can consistently kick the ball deep, all right, what we choose to do is we choose to go to like a seven man front or a four three front type look where we play four players on the front line, all right, with Obviously, they're going to have their, you know, their their feet at about the 49-yard line. All right, you can't be on the 50; that'll be offsides. We're going to be 10 and a half from that kick line, so from that 40-yard line, we're going to be sitting with our feet at about the 49. All right, and those four on the front line, all right, they're all man blockers. Okay, in the return scheme, in the onside scheme, none of those players are responsible. All right, to recover a football, we never make them responsible for recovering a football when we know we're playing teams that are multiple outside, multiple sky or pooch kicks. All right, what we go ahead and do is we work all week on the front line players not having to worry about fielding any of the onside kicks. All right, and what we do is we put three skill players behind them and we normally play skill players or linebackers, fullbacks or our aggressive receiver DB types up front anyways. But we put three skill players with hands behind them and they're ready to field every onside kick that comes their way. All right, so now what happens is when you get, you should never get a surprise on kick. You should never get anything that fools you because your front line guys, all right, like when you get the kind of middle surprise stampede kick, all right, where the kicker is going to kick that short kind of middle surprise onside kick, and he's going to try and run after it, all right, and they're going to go down there and, and you know, kind of that, that, rampage or that you know that that kind of stampede where the sixes and the fives they're coming down here looking to just blow up everything in sight okay what we do with our guys all right is we take one of the guards and we put them on the kicker right now so that if we get that onside kick only if we get the onside kick now okay if we get that that surprise middle onside kick we will go block the kicker because he's the guy that tries to field that onside kick Okay, so we would never block the kicker in our return scheme. So if the ball were kicked deep, our guard will not go after the kicker. But if you give us the surprise onside, 
our guard, our right guard will go after the kicker, and our left guard will go after that tight number six. Okay, we'll take our right tackle and try and get the first body he can see, and this middle up back, okay, with the left end and the right end, all right, left tackle will go get the first inside body he can see. This middle up back is going to be the guy all week that we work on having to field that middle, all right, stampede, that middle surprise onside, all right. That's the guy that we will work all week on. We won't work on our guards fielding that kick, all right. So what we'll work on is we'll work on our guards on that front line. If we get that surprise kick, we will go block the kicker because he's the guy that wants the ball. We'll block the first thing inside of him, all right, and then we'll try and get the nearest body, the nearest body, get the middle up back on that one, and then we'll have the ends coming and then the up backs coming in case that thing's bouncing around for whatever reason, okay? If we get any, return, if we get any onsides to the side, it's the same theory, all right? If we get any onside kicks that are, that are working, let's say we get an onside that is working this way, all right? We're going to work on these front line guys. We're going to work on making sure they do not get in the path of the ball and they go block the first closest thing to the onside that they can get so that the right end is responsible for feeling the onside kick. Okay, so that the right end is responsible for feeling the onside kick, and now the middle up back would run the block. We'd run inside to get a body, inside to get a body, and then we would all be working up towards the onside kick. But we are sp specifically putting that right end there to feel the onside kick, and this right guard and tackle know that week they will never, ever feel any onside kicks. They will avoid the ball and go play bodies and take two bodies out. So now that hopefully our guy gets a chance, all right, and a lot of times the one on the other team is the sideline safety guy. So a lot of times he's the guy that runs the sideline in case the ball, all right, he's the guy that kind of keeps the ball from going out of bounds, all right. So if we can get our right end to feel the onside kick and we block the two and the three or the two closest bodies, now we give him time to feel that and then we've got to be rallying up around it, all right. So we'll work all week on these middle right left onside kicks. All right, we'll do the same thing if we, got the kick, if we got the onside kick coming this way. All right, if we had the onside kick working itself this way, all right, we're going to go ahead and take, all right, first body, first body, left end is responsible for the ball, middle guy's running over, up back's running up, trying to get an inside piece and an inside piece of the first thing to stop all those bodies from going to the ball, okay, and then we're hoping that the 10 is the guy running the sideline, so we're hoping that he runs the sideline wide, and on those kicks, our left end, all right, a skill player for us, a receiver, a guy with really good hands, is the guy that's responsible for fielding those onside kicks. So when we know we play a team that has shown one to two onside kicks in a game, they can't kick the ball deep, all right? When they do kick it deep, it's some type of sky pooch kick, all right? We will play with like this 4-3 front, and we will defend all those onside kicks first because the number one thing in kick return all right, that we work on with our team, and any good football coach is going to tell you, on kick return, don't give up a possession. So don't let the other team steal a possession. So ball security on kick return, first of all, fielding kicks, and then ball security while running after you fielded the kick, if you didn't onside, or if it wasn't onside and you didn't fall down or it wasn't sky poots and you fair catch, okay, now you get yourself in a situation where you talk about ball security all the time because the worst thing in football to do is give up a possession, let the other team steal a possession. Whether it be muffing a punt, roughing the punter, letting them onside, not fielding a sky kick, turning the ball or fumbling on kick return, that is a possession that is stolen. All right, So you're losing that possession when the ball is supposed to be yours. As soon as they kick the ball, by definition, that ball should be your ball. All right, now obviously after it goes 10 yards on a kick, it's a live ball. But when they kick it, technically, you should have possession of the ball. That's your possession. So by giving up a possession or letting them steal a possession, all right, now you're hindering your chances of winning the game. It's just like turnovers in a way. Every possession that you give away, you're hindering your chances. You're giving them more possessions and you're giving yourself one less possession. All right, so now depending on the sky kicks that you get, Okay, the first thing we work on all the time is if they have a guy that can really sky kick them, all right, high and short, we're going to talk to these three 
up guys and the left up back and the right up back and we're going to talk to them about fair catch and kicks without ever moving backwards okay so if we have these guys on let's say the 45 all right and we have these guys somewhere on let's say the 30 okay all right we talk to them about these guys have to field any short high kick over the front line and we had a team that one or two teams that did it really well to us this year they they pooch kicked and the ball literally went just over the front line, okay, and it went right behind the front line, and if you had a regular kick return set up, it was in that kind of dead area over the front line in front of your up backs. All right, and I've seen teams recover a lot of sky pooch kicks like that. So we talked to our guys right away, if you get a ball that you don't have to back up for, we're going to fair catch that right away because as soon as we signal fair catch, they have to give that player a chance to feel the ball. You'll see teams try and do it, and, and maybe they'll get away if, if – You'll see teams try and run guys down that try and jump and catch the ball off the kicker's foot. If the kicker kicks the ball in the air, okay, you have the right to feel the ball before they touch or feel the ball. So if you have a guy in position to field it and he makes a fair catch signal, they cannot, kick, they cannot interfere with that kid fielding the ball. Now, if it's an onside kick that hits the ground twice and bounces up, obviously that one they can go get. But if it's a short pooch and you fair catch and you give a fair catch signal, you have the right to feel that ball. Anything they do up to go up and try and bat it or field it, it's going to be your ball first touching. All right, it's going to be a legal touching on the kicking team. All right, so what's going to happen is we're going to talk to these guys about fair catches. Then we're going to talk to the left up back and the right up back about where that ball is kicked, the height of the ball that is kicked. All right, how high is that sky kick? If you get these really good kickers that put it in the air forever, we're still going to fair catch the ball with the left up back and the right up back because if we have them at the 30 and they don't have to back up, all right, and we fair catch anything from the 30 up towards the 40, 45, all right, that would be like catching a ball at the 5 and returning it 30 yards. So I'll take, if a kickoff went out of bounds, you'd take it at the 35 most of the time, okay? So I'll take the ball at the 30 or the 35 every chance I can get and not lose the possession. So we're going to talk to the left up back and the right up back, okay, about fair catches as well. Now, if the kicker kicks it short, but it doesn't have a ton of height on it, then we'll talk to these guys about fielding it and getting straight up the field to give me extra yards with ball secure. So we'll talk to them about the height of the kick. Don't back, don't back up, all right? Don't ever back up over for a kick. Let the guys behind you come up to field kicks so that you're not stumbling backwards, okay? We'll talk about the height of the kick. These first middle up back, left end, right end are going to fair catch everything that's pooched, all right, because you're only 15 yards away. That kick in the air that's pooched, you're going to get blasted. So we'll fair, fair catch everything with them. And then we'll talk to our left up back and right up back about the height of the kick. Can you get us more yards with ball security, okay? And we'll talk to them about whether or not they need to fair catch it, and then we'll try and work scenarios in practice where they could have, do they fair catch it? Should they have caught it and got a few extra yards, okay? And then our returners are going to be responsible for everything that goes over their head. So depending on the type of kicker, if he can't get it past the 15, we'll put our returners on the 15, and they have everything from the 15 up to the 25 or the 28 because we don't want our up backs backpedaling either because that's where you get into trouble where guys try to backpedal to field those balls. So we're going to talk about the onsides first and how we handle them. Then we're going to talk about the skies or the pooches and how we handle them. Okay? Anything that's kicked kind of hard on the ground, all right? If it's traveling real hard and fast, you're going to let it go to the next guy behind you. If it's not traveling that hard, okay, you're either going to fall on it or you're going to advance it two to three yards, four yards forward with ball security. We'll take, again, a, a squib kick, all right, that goes somewhere to one of these up backs, at the 30, if they fail the squib kick at the 30 and go five or eight yards forward, we're going to get the ball to 35, 38. All right, that's no different than setting up a great return where you feel that at the five and you go 25, 30 yards with it. So we'll take that ball every time. So we're going to talk about skies and pooches and squibs and what our guys need to do. And then we're also that week, we'll probably have one return set up since we have to spend so much time on handling the onsides and the skies and the pooches. Usually we'll have one return set up and it's a man scheme. All right, for our guys, it'll be a man scheme where we're trying to block people with leverage. Okay, so maybe we'll try and block, all right, nine. We'll try and block eight. 
okay? We'll try and work, all right, possibly um, left up back, we'll get up and try and block seven. We'll try and block six with the middle, all right? We'll try and work to five here, try and work to four, possibly here, all right? Our right end, we'll try and work to three, okay, there, all right? And then our, our left returner, right returner, if we think we're going to get a right return, then we'll have the right up back on the two, right returner on the one, and if we get a kick back here, we'll try and take it there and block everybody with leverage this way and hope that, depending on what you watch on film, if the widest guy has to chase it down, we hope he can't get there. Now, if you're watching film and the nine or the eight is the guy that backs out, what you're trying to find on film is which one of these guys is the safety because that's the one on each side you'd like to not block if you know who's the safety. Good teams are going to switch who the safety is every week, all right, or they're going to line them up in different spots so that you don't know who he is in the return, all right. But when you're dealing with a, a, a ton of onside sky pooch kicks, you really don't have a lot of time to set up different returns. You want to get one return in so that if they do get a kick that your returners can handle, you feel like you have a man scheme blocked with leverage so that you have a return set up, okay. But when we face teams, all right, that, that are giving us these types of scenarios, we are going to work the onside, the sky, and the pooch 80%, and we're only going to work the return 20%. Okay, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that we take away every onside, sky, pooch opportunity that they feel they're trying to steal a possession so that they don't steal a possession. All right, and then the return itself becomes secondary because if their kicker is a guy that can't get it past the 15, we feel like if he kicks it to the 15 and our guys work, so now we know if we get a, if every one of these players is taught if the ball gets kicked over your head, now you go block your man in the scheme. Okay, so that's why the right guard won't block the kicker if the ball's kicked over his head deep. He'll only block the kicker if he gets this middle onside, stampede onside, surprise onside. That's the only time he's going to block the kicker because the kicker's the guy that's trying to recover that onside kick. So if you're a kicking team or a coach that uses a surprise middle onside, don't be shocked if they go block your kicker, okay? If you're going to use your kicker to field an onside kick, you have to expect that the other team is probably going to try and possibly block him. Now, if we set up returns, we're never going to run at the kicker, all right, and try and block the kicker. That's not something we do. The kicker is usually a safety valve or a guy that doesn't make a lot of tackles. If he's a guy that, you know, like Florida used to have, the kid that would toe kick and run down and wedge bust, well, then, yeah, you may need to block him. But in 99% 90, of the time, the kicker's not that guy. We're not going to block him unless it's surprise on side. So now when the ball gets kicked deep, now all these guys can go ahead, all right, and execute whatever their assignment is, okay, whatever the left end. Now if we know we have 9, 8, 10, 7, all right, 6, 5, 4, 3, somebody working up to get, all right, to 2, somebody working wide to get to 1, all right, it's a man scheme. It's not cross blocks, it's not a lot of wedges, it's not, it's not set up to be that dynamic of a return, all right, because what, you, what you're trying to do is you're spending all your time defending all the things that can get you in trouble that they like to do, all right, so when you defend, when you, it, it, it's about time efficiency as a coach, when you're defending all the things that can get you into a lot of trouble, skies, pooches, and onsides, you don't have a lot of time to set up returns, that's another reason a lot of coaches use in, in high school these types of kicks because they know it's very hard for you to set up great returns. Okay, now, if you have a kicker that you know consistently kicks it towards the goal line or to the five, all right, and you don't see a lot of skies or a lot of surprise on sides, now those are going to be weeks where you're going to be setting up different returns, whether they be walls or wedges or guys maybe possibly cross blocking or, you know, however the ambush type returns, whatever you want to talk about. That's because if you don't see a ton of surprise on sides, all right, and you see kicks that constantly go deep, well, those weeks are when you're going to set up and talk to your kick return about actually returning kicks. All right, but when you see a team that a lot of times teams with, with the kick, the kicker won't even take a, a three-step approach. So the ball will be sitting right here, and the kicker will take a two- to three-step approach. You know what he's going to do. When he takes that approach, if you look at the laces, you know where you're going to get the skies and the pooch, and you know you've got to defend onside kicks. Okay, you know that he can't kick it with that approach. He can't kick it any deeper than the 15 or the 20. So there's no sense lining guys up back there. There's no sense. You might as well get up there. And what we like to do is go 4-3, three, 
two two. All right, and we like to go ahead and talk about onside kicks and defending onside kicks. We like to talk about telling these guys to be blockers on onside kicks and not the guys that get caught kind of dropping and then having the field. They know for a fact they're looking for onside kick. They get onside kick. They know they're blocking right now. And we have people behind them set up for those onside kicks. Okay? So a lot of times in high school, you're going to deal with this type of stuff. You're going to deal with these type of kicks. You're going to deal with that stuff. And what I suggest to you, all right, I suggest you use some type of scheme where your front line are blockers and you have people behind them that are assigned to return or to field onside kicks. And then you have guys that are set up to field skies and pooches. And then you have your deep returners just in case you get one to the 15 or the 10. And you have a return set up. All right, but the return wouldn't take the priority that week. The priority would be taken by fielding onside kicks, sky kicks, pooch kicks. Don't give them an opportunity to steal possession. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I hope, as always, you guys probably have a scheme out there that's probably better than that. This is what we do. It works well for us. We haven't given up a possession on a kick this year so far in this season in eight games. Knock on wood, whiteboard, wood door. I haven't given up one yet, so hopefully that's been working for us. Our kids have done it and executed it real well. Hopefully it works for you as well. If you got anything and you want to post a comment, I'd love to hear. Remember, guys, you don't play well until you play fast. I'll see you next time.